Maybe it's a classic or maybe a flop. Has Katie seen it? She probably has not. She'll sit down and watch it if it's good or it's bad. Hey, have you seen this? No, Katie hasn't seen that. Hi, I'm Katie, and if I had a nickel for every time someone said to me, wait, you haven't seen this movie? Oh my god, you need to see this movie. I'd be very rich. So this is my podcast, where I finally watch those movies you all have told me I need to see, and I tell you what I think. Hey, there's spoilers ahead, just so you know. In the desert? Spoilers in the desert. Okay, I'm watching Dune today. Dunes are in the desert. So if I use my brain logic, which is a very important skill I have, my brain logic gets me through a lot. And you've heard from all of my thoughts about the movie before I watch it, how wrong I am most of the time. So this is my long way of saying there's spoilers in the desert ahead because I'm watching Dune. Apparently there is a 2020 version, but I'm watching the original from 1984, before I was born. And this movie is coming at you hot. From Sumidian. Sumidian recommended this movie to me. Sumidian is an awesome moderator and person that I know through my Twitch stream. I'm a Twitch streamer. I play video games on the internet and hang out with some amazing folks over there. And we raised $25,000 for St. Jude in the month of May. And I had an incentive where people could donate and suggest a movie to me. And Sumi did that. And Sumi recommended Dune. So here we are. Thank you, Sumi, for your generous donation to St. Jude. And I hope I do you right by this review. Oh gosh, I hope I don't let you down. The only thing I know about this movie is that a young Patrick Stewart is in this. I love Patrick Stewart. Love him. Okay? I want to meet him before I die. That is on my bucket list. I just, I want, I want that. Okay? But a young Patrick Stewart is in this, so I'm already sold based on that. And I'll be honest, that is all I know. That is all I know. It is from the 80s. It is rated PG-13. And it is listed as a sci-fi action. Sumi knows me well. We have a similar taste in movies and TV shows, so I'm really curious how this one will line up. What if I hate it? Oh no. What if I love it though? That's a possibility. And this movie's got sci-fi and action in it. Two things I value in a good movie watching experience. Is there a desert in this? When I look at the poster, it's like one of those posters where there's people's faces on it and they're kind of scattered about and there looks to be a desert and also a planet. So I really do not know where this is going to go, but I'm ready for it. I'm not reading the description as I normally do. I had no idea, though, that Kyle McLaughlin, is that how you say his name? Kyle McLaughlin. I'm scared I'm saying that wrong. He's from um, Twin Peaks, right? Yeah, that's the guy from Twin Peaks. And oh, he was in Showgirls, too. I never saw Showgirls, but I have heard rumors. So that's pretty cool. I didn't know he was in this. I know it's based on a book as well. I think it's a book by Frank Herbert from 1965. Did not pull that from my brain. I did read it off a screen right now. Tried to make it seem like, ooh, I knew this knowledge, but I didn't. I've actually had some friends post pictures of their Dune books and the cover art is beautiful and stunning and intriguing and makes me want to dive into it. And that's where I come back to. Books usually make really good movies. So my expectations are pretty darn high. I feel like most of the time I record these, my expectations are pretty high. And I feel like I should tone that back because then I'm like more apt to be disappointed by the movies. But also I try to be realistic and I feel like the ratings for this movie will keep me realistic. Internet Movie Database has given this bad boy a 6.5 out of 10. Huh. 52% on Rotten Tomatoes. Buckle up. 40% from Metacritic. But... 81% of Google users like this, so maybe I'm one of those Google users. I use Google a lot. Maybe we have some things in common. Maybe Dune will be one of those things. I also am not really seeing a lot of Patrick Stewart on the one page I pull up before watching the movie. So I'm very curious to how much Patrick Stewart ratio there is to this movie. But I bet it's the right amount because you want to know something? Anytime Patrick Stewart's in a movie... Or a TV show, it's always the right amount. It's always just the right amount of Patrick Stewart. You never go, oh, it's too much, or oh, it's too little. It's just the right amount. So I bet that's going to happen here. I'm going to stop gushing about my love for Patrick Stewart, even though that will eternally never stop. And I'm going to watch Dune. Thank you again, Sumi, for recommending this movie. 
and I hope it's not too hot in the desert. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go watch this. Oh my god. I am back. I watched Dune and let's dive in like the worms into the sand. The first thing I want to do though is read from the Rotten Tomato website and read from the paragraph entitled Movie Info. David Lynch wades through dark waters in his adaptation of Frank Herbert's cult science fiction novel. In condensing Herbert's rambling and complex book by eliminating characters and compacting events, Lynch succeeds in rendering the story incomprehensible to those unfamiliar with the novel and making the film look like a sketchy greatest hits collection of the book for Herbert fans. Nothing validated how I felt after watching this movie more than that beginning of a paragraph. Where do we even begin? I just, I don't even know where to begin. The whole time I was watching this and my husband Mark watched it with me, we were sitting there looking at each other like, oh, wait, did is this what happens? Oh, wait, okay, wait, is this who that guy is? Is that what's happening with her? Wait, is she pregnant? Like, there was just a lot of that throughout it and a lot of uh, confusion. And I was like, it, wait, is this movie just too highbrow for me? Am I not smart enough for Dune? No. Dune tried to do something impossible, which was tell a story without giving most of the information. So, so much of this movie was me trying to headcanon what the f was going on. There are a couple critic reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, which I think are actually important to read to kind of express how I felt about the movie. Michael Blowen from the Boston Globe wrote, well, he, he gave it a rotten review, said, unless you have the book committed to memory, you'll find it practically impossible to follow the story. Another critic, Richard Corliss from Time Magazine said, most sci-fi movies offer escape, a holiday from homework, but Dune is as difficult as a final exam. You have to cram for it. And not to only show off the negative reviews, this is a positive review from the Variety staff of Variety Magazine saying, Dune is a huge, hollow, imaginative, and cold sci-fi epic. And then I don't know how to pronounce this man's name. But Paul An Anaticio from the Washington Post said, as you would expect from visionary director David Lynch, it's a movie of often staggering visual power and the most ambitious science fiction film since 2001. It's also stupefyingly dull and disorderly. Damn! That was also a rotten rating in case you couldn't tell. I wanted so badly to like this movie. Sue me. Forgive me. This movie was a mess to me. Um, uh, oh my gosh. Let me talk about... How do I even summarize what this movie is about? It's like, there's, there's a, oh my God. There is a space time travel element called spice that people can take. And so this spice allows people to travel through space and do crazy things. And so essentially there's these like space factions that are fighting with each other for control of the universe and spice. So I googled, can you summarize Dune in one sentence? And of course, I was taken to Reddit. And this is what some Reddit users have shared. Fight at the sand pit over orange cocaine. He who controls the spice controls the universe. And my personal favorite, just when you thought couldn't get any weirder. I, I, it's essentially people who want control of spice and they're fighting with each other. And there's like this chosen one played by Kyle MacLachlan and he's named Paul and he's got like, you know what? I'll be honest with you. There's no real easy way to explain Dune. You just gotta like watch Dune. No, that's not even a way to explain it. You know what? Let's do it. I'm gonna read you the rest of the movie info from Rotten Tomatoes. Buckle up and please forgive me if I mispronounce things. Also in this description, it confirms something I wondered about the movie. So let's just, I'll just read it. The story takes place in the year 10,191. The universe is governed through a system of feudal rule, presided over by the Padisha Emperor Shaddam IV, who appears to take his marching orders from something that resembles a talking vagina. In the kingdom are two rival houses, the House of Atreides and the House of Harkonnen. Each house is trying to gain dominion over the universe, but that dominion can only be gained by the house that controls the spice, a special substance that permits the folding of time. The spice is only available on the desert world of Arrakis or Dune. 
Shaddam, tired of the feuding between the two houses, permits the Atreides to take over the spice production on Dune, while secretly working with the Harkonnens to launch a sneak attack on the Atreides and destroy them. The leader of the Atreides is Duke Leto, who ruled with the help of his concubine Jessica and son Paul. The rival Harkonnens are headed by the pus-oozing degenerate Baron Vladimir Harkonnen and his two unsavory nephews, Rabin and Fade. When his father is murdered by the Harkonnens, Paul escapes to Dune, where he is greeted by the Freemen, the desert dwellers on Dune who prepare the spice, as the Messiah foretold in the Freemen legend. Paul assumes the mantle of Messiah and leads the Freemen, Freemen, I don't remember how to pronounce it, forgive, in a revolt that topples the balance of power in the universe. Reading that kind of helps clear up of what I just watched, but not really, okay? Here's some of my thoughts on Dune. The movie looked really good. Like, for 1984, freaking killing it with the special effects. It had some fifth element feels, which is one of my favorite movies. And I really appreciated the future tech, the way that the sandworms looked, what they did to showcase the future and bring future tech to life. Special effects, creature creation, those were fabulous. There were so many lore drops, but at the disservice to the audience because there was like this assumption that the viewer already knew a lot about this world and about the houses and the people involved. And so there's just a lot where you're sitting with it and you're like, wait, did I miss something? Was there like a, a sentence that just wasn't said? And so I just felt a lot of this movie was very convoluted and very confusing. And then let's just talk about the internal dialogue. There is so much in this movie where the characters do a voiceover of their internal dialogue. And I was like, that kind of did a disservice to the movie itself because I felt like their facial expressions and they should have let the acting do that for them instead of just saying like, oh, it's Emperor internally and then saying, hello, Emperor, it's great to see you. That kind of thing. Patrick Stewart is in this movie and I love you, Patrick Stewart. I just am very confused if these people who worked on this movie were just like huge Dune fans. I also need to keep in mind that actors are also just working for a paycheck. Not everything's a passion project. It was just a weird movie with some weird stuff and then you just couldn't really make sense of things. What was wrong with several of their mouths? Some of them had like diseased looking mouths and we never really knew why. I'm like, do they have the herpes? Are they okay? Are they meth addicts? I just, there was several characters that had just like red crusty inflammation around their mouths. And I'm like, please, I need to know the origin story of the mouth issues. Well, guess what? I was curious enough to Google it. I don't believe this was ever addressed in the movie. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Tweet at me. Come to my stream on Twitch at Katie Peters Plays and tell me. Sappho, or more commonly, the juice of Sappho, was a high energy liquid extracted from the barrier root of the plant from Akaz. It was used by mentats since it amplified their mental powers even further. Users develop deep ruby stains on their mouths and lips. There was a guy, I think, on like a tram kind of thing talking about that, but it wasn't clear. Yeah, there was like a guy like Sapphos had, like it was, it was, there may have been a mention of that, but not enough for me to fully understand. That's why they had red mouths that looked diseased. And we just need to talk about this man, the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, played by Kenneth McMillan, and what is quote on the Rotten Tomatoes website in a thoroughly through the roof performance is what it says. Also in a thoroughly off-putting performance, this guy had like boils on his face and he was a literal psychopath. He would float around in his little suit and he like killed a guy and I couldn't really tell what his motives were, but the guy was a psychopath and it was almost like the movie was trying to make you go like, see how bad he is? And I was like, I get it. I don't really want to see more of his badness, please. And his nephew was played by the one and only Sting. But there was a scene where Sting came out of like a steam chamber in a weird Dr. Manhattan diaper and like Sting's got his six pack out. Sting's in the prime of his life. And the Baron was doing creepy weird. I don't really know if that was the intent to make it seem like the Baron was interested in his nephew, if you catch my drift. But the, just, I was thoroughly disgusted by his character because he was just so awful and gross. Not just him, but the acting on a whole in this movie is really not that good. Bless all of their hearts. It just didn't land. And I mean, it could have been 1984. Maybe that was like 
creme de la creme of acting, but I found myself laughing a lot where I shouldn't have been laughing. I'm so scared to post this episode because Sumi, I love you. I'm sorry if you love Dune. It just wasn't for me. And I just want to be honest about it. There also was a lot of weird vagina and penis stuff. There were so many phallic things and so many vaginal looking things. I'm sorry if those words upset you. But if you've seen Dune, you have seen these things and you can't not notice them. You can't not go, hmm, maybe that was a reference to a penis. Or, hmm, that looked an awful lot like a vagina. And it happened several times. There was even a, a scene where like a little spy device comes into Paul's room and he says something that's like, I need to grab it, but it might be wet and slippery. So I need to make sure I grab it really tight. And the little spy device looked very phallic in nature. That couldn't have been an accident. Speaking of phallic things in nature, the worms. Granted, worms are worms, but that was one of the redeeming factors in this movie for me. The worm stuff was kind of cool, like the, the special effects for the worms coming out of the ground and like that kind of stuff. I was like, huh, that was pretty cool. Like the sandworms, those were great. It is also interesting that a lot of these characters had crazy names. And then two of the main characters were Paul and Jessica. And also the Freeman. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. I don't know if it's, I think it's Freeman. Maybe it's Freeman. Have I been saying Freeman? I've said it so many times now. I actually don't know if I'm saying it right. But they have like blue glowy eyes. And I was like, hey, is this the birth of the Snapchat filter? That was also another example of some kind of cool special effects from the 80s. Liked that, but it did remind me of Snapchat filters. If I were to like meet someone on the street and say like, hey, have you seen Dune from 1984? And they're like, no, what, what is it like? The best way I can describe this is Game of Thrones, but it's Game of Spice or Game of Thrones in space. It's just factions fighting with each other for control of something, but also with a lot of confusion and internal head cannoning and kind of going like, I got to Google something about this. So all in all, Dan, I am so grateful for your generous donation to St. Jude. And I sure did watch Dune. I watched it. I hope you'll still be my friend after this. Okay, Dan, please, no. I think you're wonderful. I am going to give this movie a one out of 10 internal monologues. Oh no. That is the lowest thing I've ever given a movie. I'm going to be honest. This is one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my life. Oh, I can't tell if there's disappointment or elation from others. Validation that they are not the only one that feels this way. With that said, though, I am very curious. They remade this movie. I thought it was out, but it's not. They remade Dune to come out on December 18th in the year 2020. I might say that I am so curious because of how much I didn't like the Dune from 1984. I want to watch the new Dune to see if it makes more sense and if I kind of get it. I don't think in good faith I could recommend this movie to anybody. But if you want to experience what I might qualify as a fever dream, watch Dune. Again, Sumi, thank you so much for your St. Jude donation and your recommendation for me to watch this movie. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed you made me watch this. But with all the love, thank you all for listening. Please come find me on the internet. Tell me what you thought of Dune. This is one I need to know what people's opinions are. Okay, come tell me. I will catch you all in the next episode and just know, even if you loved one of these movies that I happen to not like, I still freaking love you. And guess what? We're allowed to not like the same things and that's what makes the world beautiful. And you know what? Anything that adds more sci-fi to the world is worth it, even if it's not my cup of tea. I'll catch you all in the next episode. If you want to hang out with me more, or if you just want to yell at me for my thoughts on a specific movie, I stream over on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash katiepetersplays. Also, feel free to follow and chat with me on Twitter at playkatieplay and on Instagram at katiepetersplays. Music written and performed by Mark Can Do It. Katie Hasn't Seen That is a part of the Geek Generation Network. Until next time, keep your popcorn warm for me.